What's going on everybody? So in front of us we have a torn apart 2009 Yamaha R6 that needs a coolant replacement. It uh, should currently have distilled water in it and uh, we've got some engine ice that we're going to put in there and I'm going to show you how to do that today. So obviously the first step for this for a normal person if you have like a bike that's not torn apart and wrecked you're going to need to take all your fairings off. Obviously we're going to skip that step today because uh, my bike is torn apart and my fairings are all in pieces. So we're just going to go straight into the steps of you've already taken the fairings off your bike. I would reference your owner's manual if you don't know how to do that or watch YouTube videos because that's probably easier anyway. So now that your fairings are off hypothetically uh, let's move into what we need to do. Before we get started with the video you are going to need a couple of things. You're going to need engine ice or whatever coolant you wish to use. You're going to need some distilled water to flush your system. You're going to need a pan to catch all the crap coming out of your uh, out of your engine. You're going to need a pair of gloves. This job can get a little dirty. You're going to need a ratchet. And you're going to need a 10 millimeter and an 8 millimeter nut. And then obviously the rag if you want to clean stuff up. So first things first, we're going to need to take the nut off to allow the coolant to drain from the motorcycle. If you're watching this video, you probably don't know where that is. Well, so I can let you know, it's right there. You don't see it? Okay, let's zoom in. That little guy right there, that's the nut we need to take off. So grab the wrench that I told you to get, grab the eight millimeter uh, tip, let's get her off. Be careful, coolant will start coming out once you uh, take this nut off, so you are gonna need something underneath it to catch the coolant. Alrighty, so it's fun to sit here and wait on this for a while, but a way we can speed this up is to take off the cap here to allow more air to go through. So we're gonna take this cap off, now that with that cap off, you can see we're getting a lot more coolant flowing through the system. That's just going to speed it up so you can get the coolant out at a faster rate. Again, that cap located right there. So as you can see, we're now just dripping from the bottom. So we're going to move on to the next step. All right, so the next step is we're going to remove the reservoir. Typically, if you guys are just doing a regular flush, you guys are going to have um, coolant left inside this guy. With me having wrecked, this has spilled out, so mine's going to be empty, but I'm still going to do it just to show you guys what you're going to need to be doing. So you're going to need to grab that 10 millimeter socket and the wrench, and we're going to take these bolts off so we can dump this guy out. So, as you can see, we just take the little tube out, undo the bolts, and you're good to go with this. We're going to dump this into the, um, into the reservoir that we have. Alrighty. Now, we're going to put this right back on now that we've dumped it out. And all that's going to be doing is reapplying the nuts that were in there. All right guys, so I just realized I forgot to mention, you are gonna need a funnel for this job. That's basically just to make it easier to get the distilled water inside of here. Let's go ahead and move the wheel so we can get it in there easier. So what we're gonna be doing now is actually flushing the system. We're gonna be pouring distilled water into here and letting it go all the way through the system. It's gonna come out where the uh, coolant came earlier. So I'm going to run distilled water one more time just so you guys can see the uh, color of the liquid coming out of the bottom bolt. You can see that the water, the, the liquid that's coming out of there is relatively clear. So what we're going to do now is re-tighten the bolt here on the bottom. We're going to fill the radiator up with distilled water and turn the bike on to the point where the bike's fan turns on. And uh, at that point, we'll turn the bike off, unscrew the bolt, and then let that uh, run out. 
Alright guys, so we filled the radiator full of distilled water. I would recommend when you're doing that to listen to the bike because it's gonna you're gonna hear that sound change over time when it's filling up. So when you hear it getting full, I would go ahead and take the uh, I would go ahead and take the tube out because you don't want it to like overflow onto you or whatever. Alright, so we've got the radiator full of distilled water. We're now gonna crank the bike up, let it get up to temperature, and then we're gonna turn it off because at that point the radiator is going to start running and cycle the water through it. Alrighty guys, so we had a slight issue. Uh, the bike was actually dead, the battery was dead from, it hasn't been cranked up since it wrecked. So with the alarm on, I guess the bike just died. But we've got the bike charged up now, so now we're going to turn it on and uh, let it stay on until it heats up and the radiator turns on so it starts cycling the fans. All right, guys, so at this point, we just turned the bike off. Keep in mind, you can't unscrew the holes right now because everything that comes out of this bike, along with the radiator cap and the nut, are going to be hot as hell. So let your bike cool off for a minute, and then once it cools off, we're going to be taking the screw out again, going to take the radiator cap off, and let all of that distilled water drain through the system. You guys ever have that moment where you're, like, super impatient? Yeah, that's look at the steam coming off of that. Yeah, guys, I would definitely recommend when you're doing this, make sure you do wait longer. I've only waited probably 10 minutes, and this water is still crazy hot, so just be careful with it. But we can do, I mean, it's coming out pretty well. And grab a towel, screw the radiator off, radiator cap off, and get it draining. And we're just gonna let this drain out. You can see the water is still a little bit green, and that's because we let it cycle through the system. Alright guys, so as you can see, we still got a lot of water coming out of the bottom. What I went ahead and did was empty out the reservoir here. What I'm going to do now is let this continue and then I'm going to run distilled water through the entire system one more time. And then when we come back, we'll be doing the engine ice. But I'm going to go ahead and skip the second, sta second stage of doing the distilled water because there's no point in showing you guys again what we just did. So do what I just did with the distilled water a whole another time, let the bike heat up, cycle the in or water through the engine, and then come back and we'll be here doing the engine ice. So as you can see, there is very little to no more distilled water dripping out the bottom of the bike. And we have done two cycles of distilled water getting the bike up to temperature. Now what it's time to do is put the nut back on the bottom and fill it up with engine ice. And after that, we're done. So I'm gonna go ahead and screw the bottom nut on and then we're going to start pouring the engine ice into the radiator cap. Be careful with letting the bike get cool guys. Do not get impatient and try to do this early. The liquid coming out of that bike is really really hot and I don't want you guys to get burned. Alright guys so here we have one and a half or a half a gallon or 1.89 liters of engine ice. From what I've read it'll take this entire bucket uh, but uh, we'll see I guess once I get it all in there. Grab our handy dandy funnel. Alrighty. Guys, when you're doing this, make sure you go slow. You gotta give the liquids time to like settle once they get in there. You can't just pour the whole thing in right off the bat. Alrighty guys, so I can see the engine ice coming up to the top of the radiator, so we're gonna use the remaining and put it in the reservoir. And guys, I'm putting it in the reservoir. You don't wanna be full, you don't wanna be low, you wanna be somewhere in the middle. Alrighty guys, so I stuffed as much of the engine ice in as I could. The radiator is absolutely full. The overfill area is full as well. And I've still got a little bit left. And this is a 2009 R6. So uh, one engine ice thing will do for you. And again, this is a half gallon, half gallon of engine ice. Um, and at this point guys, we're just gonna put the cat back on. There's probably gonna be some spillage. There's probably gonna be some spillage because I did put a little too much, but this is why we have rags. We're gonna get this cap back on, get it back in there. All right guys, so typically at this point you're gonna put your fairings back on. For me, I do not have fairings yet. So I'm gonna call that job done. This has been a coolant replace on a 2009 Yamaha R6. 
Hope you guys thought the video was interesting and helpful. If you did find this video helpful, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And let me know in the comments if you like the how-to videos and maybe we can start doing them more. Uh, this is step one for the rebuild process of Holly. So look forward to more uh, tutorials on the, the rest of the rebuild process. Thank you guys for watching the videos. I'll see you in the next one. Later.